Self-assurance. Something we humans love way too much. We tell ourselves before we leave home that we won't forget to turn the stove off. And when we see something bad happen somewhere in the world, we think that could never happen to us. But why are we superior enough to believe that something bad somewhere else in the world could never happen to us? When in fact, we could be pushed to extremes of life without even our own consent. Well, over the summer, I went to Turkey and I began interviewing Syrian and Iraqi refugees. And these questions started popping a lot inside my mind, especially as I began interviewing the younger ones. One day, I began to record and document all of my experiences there. And that day, I got a lot of change. When we went into the first house, I visited, I was a little bit scared because I didn't know how to approach someone who had just endured escaping a war, when the worst thing that I've ever endured is not getting my G1. So when we went into the first house, we, began, we looked around and we saw one couch. In a family of seven, they were sharing one couch. There were three adults and four small children. And I thought, well, my family can't even share one TV. And I began asking them some more questions. I said, what are your experiences moving to Turkey? What do you feel? And I was very shocked at the answer I got, because the, I got the same answer for each family. They said, we are the lucky ones. We are the ones who got a second chance. And that answer made me question my own life. But there's a specific experience that I'd like to talk about, because I think it summarizes my entire experience there. And it's with this boy named Abdullah. Abdullah is eight years old, lives in a family of six, and had just migrated to Turkey two months before I met him. I felt like Abdullah and I became friends as soon as we started talking. He told me about how much he loves to play sports, and how much he loves to play with his friends. And at that instant, I thought I was interviewing a grade three student in Canada. But when I asked him whether he missed going to school, his eyes filled up, and I, I decided to end the interview. Because right then and there, I got so much more information out of his life than he could have ever described with words. And that's when it hit me. Abdullah's words will go unheard. He will never tell people how desperately he, needs, he feels the need to be accepted by his new society. And I remember thinking, that's the problem. I said, that is the biggest problem in the world. No one will, no one will hear his voice. And that's why we need to talk about this. We have to acknowledge that refugees from any country are humans just like us. But the only difference is they had to flee from their country. They had to cross a sea, a border, or an ocean to find freedom. And as Canadians, we now have the chance to welcome these wonderful people into our country and make them feel like they belong. We can donate to nonprofit organizations and most importantly, we can spread awareness on the humanistic aspect of the life of a refugee. Now, we always debate on what the biggest issue in the world is. But what if it's our inability to create empathy with others? Could you imagine if all of our impulses were driven by empathy? If we got a rush out of helping someone in need? What would change in the world then? There's only one way to find out. Let's all try it. Thank you.